CS183S, lecture 18, customer serving your sales prospects. Customer serving your sales prospects. What that means is this is full on one third of the value of the entire 20 lecture series, lecture 18. You can actually serve your sales prospects as if they're already your paying clients. You're working on spec and you will absolutely raise your probability, raise the likelihood of your closing new business simply by doing customer service on sales prospects. That's the value of this and it's, I've been completely remiss waiting this long to tell you about this. It should be a crime that I've waited this long to expose these sales hacks inside of CS183S Lecture 18. Doing customer service is one of the critical, key, core, massively important tasks that really goes without a whole lot of, of emphasis in the startup community. Doing customer service, practicing customer service, executing customer service, hands down is one of the best hacks to try to get your startup up and off the ground. Initially, startups sometimes pretend like they're big, careless corporations that don't care about your initial customers. That's absolutely incorrect. When you're a startup, it's a huge advantage for you to be small and little and responsive where you can go to a Home Depot and people, they're no idea who actually works there. People are just begging for customer service. People just ask you, hey, excuse me, do you work here? And I'm in freaking shorts and a baseball hat. Obviously not a Home Depot employee. If you're small, just like in lecture four, you want to be able to give people one throat to choke. You want to be able to be reachable should they need customer service. It ups the likelihood of you getting a sale by a tremendous amount. Don't pretend like you're a large company and be, oh, email contact at duck9.com. No, no. It's chang9 at duck9.com and there's my email. There's my cell phone also. So I'm not the person who came up with this. I did not come up with second supplier gambit. Grab a pen. This is all the value of everything here right now. Second supplier gambit. Second is in first second. Supplier as in you're a vendor supplier. Gambit. G-A-M-B-I-T. Second supplier gambit. This was taught to me when I worked at a Fortune 100 company doing sales, uh, doing prospecting, which is second supplier gambit. You want to provide a portion of the customer service before you actually sell the account. And if you're selling the account, let's say it's an enterprise account or some large account, you want to sell them a small, small smidge, a small, small portion. That's where Cross the Chasm from the right came from. You want to initially do second supplier gambit. Second supplier gambit works because customer service is such a pain in the butt that most people don't want to provide it. That causes me to ask you, what kind of willpower do you have to serve the people who will be paying you their hard earned money? And that's why the graphic of going the extra mile is easy, or not easy, but go the extra mile, go the extra mile, it is never crowded. Second Spider Gambit is a methodology to wedge in your little podunk startup that no one's ever heard of and do sales and customer support. If you guys studied Lecture 14, the external API, what Lisa Falzone did, Lecture 14, external API, uh, and this lecture, lecture 18, dovetail together in Lisa Falzone's startup Revel Systems. She essentially sold and provided customer service for an iPad. She did some customizations to have the iPad turn into a cash register, but Apple Computer will absolutely not walk you through the basics of turning an iPad into a cash register. That's the genius of this lecture via video on lecture 18 which is providing customer service being the second supplier gamut i've got another lisa falzone revel systems tip later on also there's actually the secret sales hacking of providing customer service everywhere all around you you may have even seen it on a sticker people will provide a sticker uh on a dishwasher oh for service call 
dishwasher supply and repair or on an ice machine oh for service for this ice machine or for this refrigeration or for HVAC anything you'll see this little sticker that sticker has a chance to make more money than most YC companies the reason I giggle and say that is because that sticker will cause each sticker place will make between five hundred to thirty thousand dollars in sales fascinating is it there's sales hacking going on everywhere sales hacking somebody didn't bring the coffee bringing the coffee to Sundance Film Festival is valuable that's why Tim Hortons did that pop-up people old people love coffee because old people are always falling asleep one of the absolute hugest biggest key takeaways from CS 183s is to do a small amount of customer service do a small amount of service to make your startup brand that nobody cares about apathy lecture 7 somewhat valid you can make your X entity a little bit more valid by providing a little something like coffee like a slice of pizza to stimulate brand activate and knowledge activate whatever you guys know external API's are common knowledge on from PayPal developers or developers or developer advocates there are people in companies that are paid to sell developers to develop on their thing so there's a developer his name is Justin Wu he's in charge of getting developers to use PayPal look at the methodologies in using uh, API's to do this customer service uh, at Cal Hacks, where where oh he used Uber to uh, do the execution. So this all exists all around us already. You we just need to like put some type of framework and up and get started with this. I placed the tweet here. It's uh, at JZ, Jason, Justin, Z is in last letter of the alphabet. Wu W O O, where he talks about uh, these customer serving hacks uh, using Venmo, PayPal, Dev PayPal Dev, and Uber. So that's the the Twitter the, that's the tweet that I have embedded. Salesforce they try to sell developers also on developing inside of Salesforce. It's a huge opportunity to do customer service because nobody really understands their CRM. <laughs> I laugh and giggle because it's it's critical to know where your customers are and people kind of don't spend enough time understanding the stuff that they already have so so ditto the awesome universe of stuff that's spinning out of Salesforce and they've got a hashtag DF for Dreamforce DF 16 or DF 17 or DF 15 so Dreamforce is how Salesforce sells developers and that's how they're serving you before they try to sell you so when people try to sell you an app I have the theory that you need some of that app functionality before you actually download the app so when you need that app functionality you're actually providing service before they download the app do you guys see a pattern here where you want to try to serve before you ask for the sale you want to serve before you ask for the download and so when you're offering functionality before the app gets downloaded by providing functionality via texting hugely valuable and the the fact that you can interact with a person and provide app functionality isn't something that a lot of large companies do because they're just saying oh well just download the app but there's friction there so that's kind of how you prime the pump Serving the customer before you ask for a $200,000 sale is absolutely the best hack ever. The way that I was trained at Nalco's, it's a Fortune 100 company, it sold uh, chemical, I was a sales engineer. Is I would initially sell chemical water treatment to the condensate return. So, so after the water boiled became steam and the steam would then condense, that condensation return sometimes wouldn't be treated or sometimes worse would be flushed and so you would lose that heat so I specialized in just selling chemical for the condensate return and that's why I look at those pipes that are labeled so doing customer service and being a wedge initially gets your foot in the door 
Taking care of stuff and actually even getting an internship is a lot like doing things on spec where it isn't just submit a resume and throw a Hail Mary sales pitch and hope that you get the account that you're selling. You're actually needing to to do more on spec where you're turning a, a role of selling a large client. That's actually a part-time job. Just like getting a job is a part-time job. We're getting an internship is a four unit class. The process of, of taking care account management, large account management processes, LAMP, you're actually needing to manage the account as if they're accounts before you sell them as an account. Tim O'Reilly actually sold Sun Manual, Stanford University Network. It was a large company called Sun. And Tim O'Reilly sold Sun Manuals at a Sun conference uh, and he didn't work at Sun. So yeah, it's an external API. Yes, Tim O'Reilly crossed the chasm from the right. But the third component is he actually provided a bunch of customer service for people that used Sun, wanted a manual, needed that mentorship, wasn't getting it. So there's an entire campus on Sebastopol that's O'Reilly Media, O'Reilly and Associates, where initially the first product was writing a Sun manual in a conference that he wasn't even invited to. So that's how customer service uh, plays. Wrapping up in the today real world example uh, of Lisa Falzone's uh, Revel Systems is providing customer support and providing product. So Revel Systems does uh, cash registers using a iPad. National Cash Registers, the entrenched company. So Revel Systems can give away the check presentment billfold where the credit card gets slid in and then the bill gets uh, paid. So you're providing a product, you're providing a customer service, because those billfolds, they end up getting super dirty because they're just dirty. I mean, everyone touches it, the bus boy touches it, everybody touches it. So you can provide customer service in the form of bill presentment products, even though they haven't yet switched to Revel Systems. I'm at Beats Coffee, and as far as, it's downtown Paul, it was cool. CS183S Lecture 18, optional homework, providing customer service, sell one eBay item and then go above and beyond the regular customer service. So manually by hand, send them an eBay, via eBay messaging, a tracking number, so that way people can track exactly the package route. The reason you're doing this is that eBay realizes that most people provide horrible customer service. So proactively eBay message them manually and then even use manual email or manual text if you're offering text message support. So that's optional homework for CS23 Lecture 18.